Hey guys, so on this video I'm going to experiment with the uh, the camera. I'm going to have a camera um, where I can swing it in front of me and I'll try to show you as best I can how I use my pencil and thumb to measure and compare to different areas of the face like the thirds of the face and then also the length to the width and even the uh, head tilt as well using the pencil. So uh, hopefully it works out. Uh, let me know if it does for you and uh, I'll make more like this. If not, then I just won't. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, and here we go. Okay, starting off with a circle. And then we're going to find... Usually we try to find the head tilt, but for her, there is no head tilt. She's straight on, uh, looking directly at us. And I like to use this line as the brow line. Some people would like to use this line as where the eyes will sit on. I like to use it, use it to indicate the brow. And then the center of the face, which is really easy in this case. i just cut this in half. So now we have the cross of the face, uh, which is, comes from the Loomis, the Loomis method. And, and now I'll go ahead and place in the hairline. And she has a widow's peak slight eh, slight widow's peak like this but I'm not concerned about that point I'm going to use the overall sweep of her hairline and the brow because she has sweeping eyebrows or arcing eyebrows I mean so I'm going to do a simple sweep for those eyebrows and then the brow ridge something like that so I'm not measuring off of the top or the peak of the eyebrow, I'm measuring at the base where the eyebrow begins in the center of the face. So that's the line I'm using in these thirds. And then the bottom, bottom of the nose, right now I'm just guessing. And then I'm gonna do a comparative measuring to find uh, those relationships between those three parts. So the one, two, and the three. Let me bring the jaw down just a little bit, or the chin. So this is what I think I see. And now I'm going to bring this camera over. And let me zoom in. You could probably see me in the reflection. Hi. <laughs> so let me zoom in on her, on her subject. Try to get this. Okay. So now I'm going to hold my pencil up and my thumb. This is kind of hard to do for me because I'm looking at the camera rather than the image on the TV. But I'm going to measure uh, bottom of the chin to bottom of the nose and then compare it to bottom of the nose and the brow. So I'm going to hold up bottom of the chin, bottom of the nose, bottom of the nose to the brow. It looks like it's slightly below, it's about right here. So we're pretty close. Now I'm going to compare the bottom third to the top third. So bottom of the chin to bottom of the nose. And then to our brow on top of the head. And they look equal pretty close to being equal. So I need to bring so I need to bring the hairline down a little bit. So what I observed by using my pencil is the bottom third is roughly equal to the top third and the middle third, the length of the nose is a little bit longer than, than those other thirds. So next I'm going to measure the width of her face and compare that to the length. And I'm going to do it from the point that her cheeks are the widest, which look, looks like it's probably like right on this line right here. So let's bring our camera back over so I can show you. Let me adjust this. Try not to hit the camera itself. 
So I'm measuring the width at the peak of her cheekbones. Something like that. And then compare it, bottom of the nose, or bottom of the chin. And it looks like, it looks like it comes to about right here. Maybe a little bit wider. So it's a little bit slightly longer than my pencil. So if I take my pencil, it might be somewhere right here. So I'm just gonna make sure I got equal part, equal distance on both sides. Perfect. So now I have a rough idea where those cheeks or the width of the face will be, and then they, uh, from cheek to cheek, compared to this length. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in some basic structure, the uh, glabella, the root of the nose, right here, I'll come down guessing or estimating the width of the nose. A little nostril sides. And then let's go ahead and put in the cheek. Actually that's yeah that's fine. Let's go ahead and do that. Put in the side of the jaw. And she has this, the side plane of the temple. And we can do the rhythm for the uh, forehead. It comes down, creates that little pocket inside the, the orbital. And then her neck. Do any lips for the uh, the shirt? Let me take out this back side of the ellipse. So let's do some of the rhythms from the Riley method, and this one here is the labial nasal labial fold, or you can just say muzzle line. And then we have the mid cheek furrow, which will help us place in the eyes. And then, so we have that sweeping arc for the brow. And then there's another sweep here. We actually take that out. And show that structure. And we can place in our eyeball. This is just for reference. We're not going to be married to it. Like we're not going to try to make the eyeball always be in the right spot, but it's just going to get us in the ballpark. So her mouth, so this is the bottom of her nose. Actually, let's go ahead and do some structure on the nose. Let's do the main cartilage ball. And then the bony structure, the, bo the bone of the nose, the nasal bone. And then we do the nostrils. Because we see the tip of her nose is falling below the outside or the, uh, the bottom of her nostrils. So 
So then her lips, looking at her philtrum, looks pretty long. There's a nice little rhythm right there. And she has, she's has, she has a slight smile. You see the tension in the lips here. The bottom of her lip is here. She has this thin lips. And then there's a little wedge shape underneath the bottom lip. And then we'll get the chin rhythm from that. Do a little corner of the lips here. Then, because she's smiling, this the uh, nasal labial fold isn't exactly like this curve. It's pulled up because of the muscle, and it comes around like so. But it gives us a good placement. And then we have this rhythm here for the bottom part of the mouth. And then we can take that mid cheek furrow and that catches here under the jaw over here. And her chin comes to a nice little point right there. And then you can see this overlapping form from the mid cheek furrow. Actually, it looks a little different. Let's see, because it comes out, because she's smiling, so it's a little bit wider. I think that's a little bit better. And then her cheekbone overlaps pretty strongly. She has a very strong structure. The bottom of her cheek from side to side just to make sure we can line up. And her neck rhythm. Most of it would be hidden in the hair once we put that in. side uh, plane of her head with the hair is following that rhythm so now we have a structure starting to come to life probably don't need to arc her eyebrows that much flatten them out a little bit uh, let's go over to the ear placement so you can see the one ear on one side, the other side is covered in hair. And it looks like her eye, or uh, top of her ear falls somewhere on this line here. And then bottom, so what I'm doing, let me take my camera actually. I almost forgot. So what I was doing, if I can do it on this, to find the top of the ear placement, I take a straight line across, and I see that it goes somewhere between the eyebrow kind of like on top of the eyelid, the top of the eyelid, that's where the top of the ear is. And I do the same for the bottom, and it's right across the bottom of the nose. So it's right about here. And we can see a lot more of this side of the ear. And it looks like her helix is or the anti helix kind of protrudes out from the top of the helix and then you see that like it pops out and then comes back down and then picks up where the earlobe the lobule sits so that's a really cool ear shape i really like that and then we can take like this overlapping lines to indicate form don't have to get too heavy into the structure of the ear here. Um, 
can't see much over here. You can see the antihelix and then down into the lobule, the earlobe. But this will be covered in hair. So that's our basic base structure. And we can go ahead and I'll save the eyes for last. Let's go ahead and put the put our hair in. So we have a like a wave kind of structure for the hair on this side. And it comes down. And it's gonna be pretty crisp, that line when it hits the head right there. A very clean line. It comes out, curves around. Something like a nice big S curve. And the top of her hair catches her head, her skull shape. And then the other side comes down. We can make this really straight if we want to create like a heavy feeling of the weight of the hair. And the hair comes out from behind the ear, following that rhythm, comes around, cuts over, and then down. See our hair picks are actually overlaps on this side too. It looks like and maybe about right here comes out some, some nice big waves. Something like that. <laughs> Don't really need to get too too much into the hair. I'm just trying to get that structure of the face right. So let's go ahead and kind of soften up the eyebrows a little bit. I just want to make them a nice shape. I have them a little too arched. And she has a soft expression, so. Let's take out some of these rhythm lines too. Actually, I'm gonna leave them in. So I wanna show that structure that we built up. Let's go ahead and place the eyes. So we have the root of the uh, or the root of the nose at the base of that gobella wedge shape. And it looks like for her, the eyes sit pretty close to that, just below it. So I'm gonna draw the straight line for the eyes to sit on <clears throat> the corner, inside corner of the eyes. And I feel like I need to make the nose just a little bit wider. Maybe not much. And you can see the split in the cartilage. Let's put that in there. Uh, okay, so back to the eyes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a parallel line and I'm gonna try to find, is the corner, so I'm gonna ask myself uh, if I take this Take this line here, this vertical plumb line, and I'm gonna see if the corner of the eye is on the inside of that or on the outside. So one way to do it is to hold your, it's kinda of hard to see here, I'll do this line. Make a plumb line with your pencil, a vertical line, and see if it's right along the side See if the inside corner of the eye is on the inside or outside of that line outside the nostril. So I can't see on the camera because it's too blurry. But it looks like it lines up real close. So from what I can see, it's on the inside just a touch. 
So I'm going to put a little dot to indicate the inside corners of the eye. So let me take out that line. And now I have the sphere. I have that, that reference for the inside. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, before I draw in the, the eyelid, let's do the orbital bone since we already have that rhythm. And I'm going to sweep from side to side. So sweep from side to side. Like so. And now I'm going to start my eyelid shape. And this is the peak of the eyelid. So we can come side to side and make sure we get those two lined up from here to here. And we sweep from side to side. corner of the eye. And we can even do that for the outside. Indicate a little flat edge to indicate the the eyeball wrapping and turning that corner. And let's do the bottom. Comes across, comes down, and then wraps up on the side. I'm going to finish this shape by showing this upper eyelid fold. And it creates a little pocket where no light usually gets into. Especially on this model, she has a really deep set eyes. I'm going to finish off the eyelid shape. Darken up the eyebrows. And their orbital bone. And let's go ahead. I feel like this eye might be a little too big. So let's do the bottom eyelid shelf. A little wedge over here in the, in the corner. It comes up and over. You don't really see that on her actually. Well, maybe it's just blown out from this side. I see it on this side, but this side is a little bit softer because of the light. Do a little cast shadow from the upper eyelid before we put the iris in. And her full eye shows on the bottom. And we can do a little highlight circle and then the pupil. Just to reaffirm some of those uh, reference structural drawing lines that got kind of pushed out or pushed off of the paper with my hand.
we didn't really show too much of the ear. So that's basically it for her on this little exercise. And I just wanted to do this just to show you the comparative measuring using the pencil and thumb. So we're using our pencil and thumb like so. And back to this camera here. So we started out using it to find the thirds and how they relate to each other. These three sections. Then we look for the width compared to the length. That's pretty much it. That's a really, it's a really, oh yeah, and also the ears. So we did the, um, a vertical, or excuse me, horizontal line using the pencil. And then we use the plumb line, the vertical line, to find the corners of the eye. So I hope that helps, guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, so I actually have like, like maybe five more minutes before I have to go to work. So I just wanted to go ahead and put some more rhythm lines in, or structural lines that will help you with the uh, shading and such. This one here is from, oops, this one here is from uh, the Riley method. And it'll help you find that cheek rhythm. And this one pretty much, you can see this rhythm right here already. So we just drag that over to the corner of the mouth, outside of the nostril, all the way over to the top of the ear. And again, this one kind of got lost, but you see how it comes down into the orbital and then picks up on the other side, that circle on the forehead. That's a really good one, especially for like plane changes and such. And then of course we have the brow. Mm, what else do I got? So I got the rhythm of the chin. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and call this one just for an exercise. And uh, hopefully the uh, the camera here helped. Um, it was a little awkward trying to look through it like that, but I was just trying to show you what I see when I'm looking. Uh, using my pencil and thumb. So let me know if that works for you. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Bye. Hey guys, so uh, I just woke up and I was looking at this drawing and I just wanted to fix some things. I was in a hurry yesterday before going to work. Uh, I was trying to get this, uh, this uh, demonstration on the comparative measuring. Um, and I don't know, just a couple of things on this drawing I just wanted to fix a little bit, try to make it more look more like the uh, the model that I'm drawing here. So I think maybe the jawline might help if I fix that a little bit. I was contemplating just scratching the whole video, but <laughs> I don't, don't have the time to like uh, do another one if I wanna get a video out. And I think I was looking at the video in the uh, editing software and I think I think it's okay as far as like explaining what I do with the uh, pencil and thumb and uh, comparing and measuring or measuring and comparing different areas of the face so I think it's I hope hopefully you'll let me know if it's not uh, adequate but I think it I think it works so but anyhow I just wanted to I'm gonna fix a little, a few things on this one, even though this is just a, uh, a study or exercise. But in any case, this is me being uh, your typical artist and not wanting to let something go. But I was looking at her hair, she has a widow's peak, so I just wanted to put that in. I indicated it earlier, but I was using the uh, overall shape of the head to do the uh, the measuring, and then I was going to come back later and put in the uh, the widow's peak. Uh, let's see. I just want to do a little touch-ups, maybe give her some better eye shape, or just darken up where the eyelashes are. She has really pretty eyes. And then uh, the nose looks good. Maybe re reduce some of these lines, make them a little bit darker. Then they get kind of smudged out during the uh, drawing process.
I smoothed out her uh, jawline, it looks like. And actually, it's too pointy. It needs to, this, the angle needs to drop down a bit. So let's do that again. Let's see. So it actually, I think it, this one sits in a little bit further. It's funny, a lot of times I'll erase a line and try to redraw it, but I wind up just drawing it right on top of the old line. Which I think I might be doing almost again, even, even though I'm telling you about it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really frustrating trying to like draw daily and and uh, also working full time at a job it's really getting annoying <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this full time someday it's like the dream just draw draw and paint all day make videos let's see so that looks better I'm not like super satisfied with it but I think I need to just let it go And uh, thank you guys for your uh, um, all the comments and the uh, get better soon kind of things. I really appreciate it. The head's healing well. Uh, I'm supposed to get the stitches out tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's good. It's funny, it caused the surgery caused a lot of uh, nerve damage in my head on the top of my head. So like, like I'll push on like a one part of my forehead and I won't feel it there. I'll actually feel it almost in the back of my head. So like the sensations are all like in the wrong place, which is kind of funny. But um, I'm just glad that they found, or uh, I went and saw somebody and they were able to take out the, uh, the basal cell cancer and I don't have to have any other treatments or anything. It's just a simple surgery just to cut it out. So, really fortunate in that respect. I'll just have to keep my eye open for more. So, let's see, should I just let it go now? Yeah, all right. All right, so let me know if the, um, that camera angle where I'm looking down the camera using my pencil and thumb, if that helps at all, or if I explained it well enough. Um, I'm not sure if I wanna do, do more videos using that or not. Um, just let me know and, uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, thanks guys.